Oh shit, buddy. <laughs> this is it. This is what we've uh, kind of been building up for. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how many people are looking forward to it. I'm, I'm glad that all seven people who are have actually wanted this will be having their wishes come true. Here we are. Let's play Minecraft Episode 1. All right, we're looking at our blocks right here. I'm showing you guys my settings, my my view distance. No, no, that's a dumb bit. Um, yeah, so here's, um, we're gonna go through at least what kind of settings I'm, I'm using. It, just, it seems like it would be a, a nice introduction, talk about what team I'm using, things of that nature. So coming through, I think I'm all pretty much default here. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I, I don't have like a monster machine, so usually what I just do is I don't really like to save too much stuff. I do like to save transactions and stuff like that, but as for right here, well maybe, do I want to keep transaction logs? Uh, I'll do, I'll do the last two years, I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I just want the box scores. Uh, players in face gen, uh, big thing, definitely disable baseball cards, uh, they come uh, turned on by default, and anyone who's ever played this game will tell you, like, unless, like, they just take too much time, you know, <laughs> and too much, uh, computing power, and they suck, and they don't even look that great, so I'm not a big baseball card guy. Uh, player development settings, uh, aging speed gets slowed down a little bit, talent change randomness gets cranked up a little bit, uh, I, I think that's maybe more realistic of, uh, real life. Uh, I do... This is turned off on default. Show player personal player personality rings on profile page. I'd like to turn that on. Uh, I'm not on challenge mode right now. I will show you guys. I right now I have hard and favor prospects. That's sort of in between the default settings and challenge mode. And then these are my ratings weights. Uh, a little more emphasis being put on stats more so than their ratings. I think that's fair. I'm gonna apply those changes now. Cool. Uh, what else may be worth noting? I think that's really about it. I think that's at the very least the most important things we have going on right now. So uh, you have already could probably tell, but I've decided to go with the Chicago White Sox, and I've chosen the Chicago White Sox for a few reasons. Uh, I originally wanted to do the Kansas City Royals. I thought the Royals would be fun because they are such uh, they are in such a shitty situation as a, as a ball club right now. They have uh, Ian Kennedy and Alex Gordon on big contracts that nobody would possibly want. They have no talent on their major league team and really no talent on their uh, farm system. So it'd just be like not even... It, it's hard to even describe what you would do with the Royals because a rebuild usually involves, you know, trading away your talented players and getting prospects and just kind of starting the whole, you know, process over, bringing up a new generation of players, but I don't even know how you would even begin with that team. I'm just, uh, uh, I just thought that the White Sox would be a really fun team. They still have a ways to go. Not the most talented Major League roster right now, uh, but some very exciting prospects in the system. I, I would look to uh, sort of add to that, maybe, you know, sort of accelerate this rebuild to try to get this team competitive uh, pretty quickly, you know, uh, the fact that we're in a cool division with guys like the Twins and the Indians, uh, they will provide really cool competition. So yeah, I'm excited about that, and I'm excited to get this series underway. So uh, I think it would be probably a good idea to talk about prospects. We could talk prospects. I have gone and created my shortlist already of guys whose uh, careers I will be following with great interest. And uh, unfortunately, top three prospects are uh, injured right now, uh, but they'll all be back at some point this year. It, they, most of them only have a few weeks to go. Uh, Eloy Jimenez was acquired in the Quintana deal last year from the Cubs. He's a big power hitting outfield prospect. Zach Birdie, a relief pitching prospect. Luis Robert, Luis Robert a, a younger sort of uh, outfield prospect. He's uh, maybe not as, quite as far along as Jimenez is. Blake Rutherford, center field prospect. Uh, Mike Kopech, Kop I don't know if it's Kopech or Kopech, but he's one of the bigger uh, prospects in all of baseball right now as terms of pitching. Uh, really nasty stuff, as you can see. 
his yeah his velocity is really high. I think he in real life I think he can hit a hundred. Uh, Chago Vieira, another cool relief pitching prospect. Zach Collins, I the contact and avoid Ks are bad, admittedly, but um, I think what's kind of interesting is that I, I have seen him turn out well in OTP, so I'm gonna keep an eye on him at, at the very least. Dane Dunning and Carson Fulmer are two. Uh, I wasn't sure. Carson Fulmer is basically uh, pitched, uh, you know, 35 innings for the um, White Sox in the majors already. I wasn't sure if I was going to have him in the rotation to begin the year. And just taking a glimpse at the White Sox rotation right now, yeah, he should definitely be in the rotation. Uh, it's definitely for the best. A uh, couple interesting rookie ball guys. Uh, not sure I say that first name, but Guerrero, another outfield prospect. Uh, Mises, Luis, something, whatever. Uh, that 70 home run power is uh, tantalizing at the very least. Uh, and then two more starting pitchers, Dylan Cease. We'll see if that changeup can possibly develop. And uh, if not, Cease could still be a good reliever. Uh, and Ian Clark in. Um, a reason I added him is because despite what my head scout thinks, he looks sort of mediocre there, but OSA uh, thinks he could be all right, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on him. And that's sort of, that's sort of our list of prospects for now. I may add or remove people from the list. There's always sort of, you know, are you in the cool kids club or not as far as that goes. So uh, Luis Giolito, you could also say, is sort of a prospect as well, even though he, I guess, his, I guess he's exceeded his rookie limit because he's not on the prospect list, but... Uh, he should, yeah, he'll also be in the rotation for this year. Uh, everyone's very angry on this team. Is that just because, um, yeah, okay, yeah, not not in my control. So, uh, And also, Yohan Mankata, another really exciting young player. I guess I'll just go through the roster right now. Yohan Mankata was, I believe, a former, yeah, he was like former number one prospect, acquired in the Chris Sale deal. Uh, that avoid case... I've seen I've seen that really undo him in OTP, so we'll hope we can get that up to at least like 40 or 45. Uh, but yeah, power hitting, uh, power hitting, switch hitting, second base prospect, toolsy. Uh, he's and he's thick as hell. Okay, obviously El Garcia, obvious, pretty good. He's had a really good 2017. Did he make an All Star? Yeah, he made All Star game. Not the most outrageously good stats, but. I mean, as far as his uh, ratings go, but I uh, can't complain there. Jose Abreu is the sort of star franchise player of this team from Cuba. He's been very good for them, and we will... He only has... Uh, oh, shit, I didn't realize he only has one more year on his contract, so uh, I would like to extend him personally, but that may cost a lot of money, so we will maybe get to that in the offseason. Nicky Del Monaco is the current starting third base then. Uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, look too great, <laughs> uh, but he does have some home run power and gap power. Um, but yeah, no, I, not yeah, not a guy, not a long term guy for me. Wellington Castillo actually looks pretty good. I'm cool with him. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some um, sort of negative personality traits from some of these guys, so I think keeping track of the personalities is going to be a big deal. Uh, Garcia, Lurie, I don't know. Lurie Garcia, I'm sorry, White Sox fans. I, re I know, I really hate it. I find it so excruciating when guys can't even like pronounce um, <laughs> uh, names, even when they're maybe not that hard. This Some of these I'm having trouble with, so I'm sorry, but I was watching this guy, and he, uh, <laughs> he uh, pronounced uh, the Padre center fielder as, what did, what did he call him? He was like, he was like yeah, Manuel Margot. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I hope I don't have to make too many of those. Uh, okay, Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson had a lovely sort of 2016 spell with them, and then the White Sox decided, hey, let's um, extend a guy for like eight years, 50 million, who uh, can't take a walk at all to save his life. So I might try to get out of that contract. I don't really know. I, my problem is I'm just coming over from playing the Marlins where it's just like I can't have any like amount of money wasted and um, I'm sure the budget for this White Sox team is much higher. That's another reason I selected them is because they actually have like a, a market and a semi-interested fan base. Uh, Yolmer Sanchez is our DH, at least in the lineup. That's weird. Um, 
I like his infield ratings. I feel like he could be more of a utility infielder than, uh, than you know, DH. I, I just want some, you know, big lumbering fuck who can't field to be a DH. And then Charlie Tilson, uh, another player I'm not familiar with at all. Okay, that's because he's played uh, one game in the majors uh, in 2016, but he is, for whatever reason, the starting center fielder on the White Sox, at least in OTP. Uh, rotation, Julito we talked about, James Shields, the man, the myth, the legend himself. How much money is he making right now? It's $10 million, but it's just one year left on his deal, and I don't think we're going to be picking up that $16 million team option. I uh, hate to break it to you. Miguel Gonzalez, all right, another uh, completely mediocre starter who will probably have an ERA over five. Looking forward to it. Hector Santiago, another one. Fulmer we've already talked about. Hope we, we can see some development. And then Carlos Rodon. Uh, is actually pretty good in this game, but he is injured to begin the year, so that kind of blows. Oh, went one click too far. Here's your um, here's your bullpen. Don't want to highlight everyone, but I will highlight Soria. He's been one of the uh, better relief pitchers in the past. You know. For, he's, I mean, he's been around a while. He's so one of the best, better leaders in the past like 10 years or so. Uh, Nate Jones, I will highlight. He's got great stuff. All right, next team. Uh, I think right now we have to do the most important part of any save, and that is you have to rate your minor league affiliates just by their names. So that's crucial. Uh, so first of all, Charlotte Knights. Uh, logo's all right. Uh, I've, been to their, I've actually been to their stadium. Uh, but for me, the whole thing is just a little mediocre for now. They do have uh, Zach Collins, though. Cool. Okay. Uh, Birmingham Barons, perhaps made most famous by Michael Jordan playing with them. Uh, I think I would rate them above the... I would certainly rate them above the, um, the Knights for now. Uh, Winston-Salem Dash. Yeah, you know... Still a lot better. I've seen Gavin Sheets turn out really well in some saves. What's he looking like? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I might as well add him to the list. Uh, insert meme of the guy like letting people into the club with the sunglasses. You guys know that one? Um, what else? Oh, Great Falls Voyagers. This is our. This is a rookie league affiliate. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. I'm super into that. I don't know where Great Falls in. I'm I'm assuming these are all. I'm pretty sure these are all places in Montana or at least around. So I'm gonna guess Great Falls is also in Montana or at least close by. So that's dope. Uh, but I think the winner right now has got to be the Canapolis Intimidators. I uh, that's a, that's a really good one. Uh, I, I would like to. I don't know. I can't remember which affiliate these guys are, but a uh, big fan of the Delmarva Shorebirds. Yeah, see, they're a uh, Orioles affiliate. Really into that. Yeah, but Canapolis Intimidators, I think they went out on that one. Uh, I'm going to look, see... Oh, yeah, Matt Davidson. Cool. Yeah, that's right. He does play for them. Um, these are some fascinating stats. <laughs> Talk about a guy who uh, sort of sells out for power. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, he's um, he's off to a hot start in real life this year. Someone said he worked with Canerco in the off season, so I think that's cool. Omar Nar Narvez, Nar Narvez is our backup catcher. I may replace him because this team, I think, needs a captain. I'm not sure if we have one. And then Adam Engel. Uh, yeah, I, I like that he's got at least solid defense. He could stick around as our utility outfielder of sorts. I just need a sip of water there. I have my little Rubio. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think maybe make some minor league signings. There's always some minor league players available. So yeah, I think I think first order of business would be make some of those signings and then um, probably just clear out the whole personnel, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I just got to get my type of uh, folks in there. So let's see what kind of free agents are available. Oh, well, let's get, let's familiarize ourselves with the budget first. That's probably more important. Go up to front office right here. Our budget is 104 million, which is the 26th most. Um, that is actually so much better than I've had in the Marlins. I've had like, just it's always been like 80 or 85 million. So that that's an extra 20 million for me. 
So market size is small, fan loyalty is poor, fan interest is low, ticket prices are very low. But uh, yeah. All right, cool. So actually kind of a smaller market than I actually initially thought, but that's fine by me. Yeah, I think first order of business is definitely get a captain type player. I'm gonna look at team chemistry. Yeah, we just don't really have too much going on there. We need a leader in the clubhouse, so. It's only three, but one of them is this guy. Not a major league ball player, but um, at least in terms of skill. I mean, he's played the majors before, so that's at least encouraging, but uh, definitely, yeah, definitely a guy that's worth grabbing. He will keep the piece, and you can't put a price on keep the piece. So he's been offered, and then I'm going to see if there's anyone else who sort of looks interesting. Billy Butler could be a good DH, good old country breakfast. Yeah, I could, um, he is outspoken though, so maybe someone else, maybe someone else. Okay, Adam Lind is kind of a shithead, so no. Melky, everyone knows, is a dirty cheater, so no. I am going to add Franklin Gutierrez. I like Franklin Gutierrez as, um, mostly because his nickname is Death to Flying Things. I, I think that's like a reference to something, uh, but I can't quite remember. I feel like I've seen it, though. Death to Flying Things. Uh, let me know. Okay, so he wants basically one of those deals where you get promoted to the majors and you get a contract or you just get released. So I will give in to that because we have budget space. Justin Masterson's nationality is Jamaican? Really? I didn't know that. He he is spark plug. Yeah, why not give him a shot? He's a ground ball pitcher too. That's good. Justin Masterson is wheeling and dealing on us. He's like, oh, I'm liking. Justin Masterson. Justin Masterson definitely read the art of the deal. You know what? 20k bonus. You can go buy like a nice. What's a nice like 20k? You can buy yourself a nice Hyundai Elantra, a brand new 2018. I don't know if you'll be able to afford like any of like the cool packages, but you could probably buy a new Hyundai Elantra. All right, top 100 prospects. Jimenez is at 19 for us. Luis Robert is at 31. Um, is that all she wrote? Uh, Jake Berger. We don't have that on my list. That was a mistake. He's on the Intimidators. Yeah, why not Jake Berger? I mean, your name is Jake Berger after all. Jake Berger, you're on the list. I'm sure we got some arms on there. This fellow Alex Lang is unfortunately on the Cubs. <laughs> I'm not too familiar, but Kopech is on there. Dylan Cease is on there. Dane Dunning is on there. Is this guy a Cubs player? No, he's one of us. Alec Hansen, welcome to the club. Actually, pretty cool looking stats if he could develop. Extreme fly ball, though. That ain't too pretty, but even then. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Number one prospect in baseball right now, Shohei Otani. Shouldn't be too surprising. All right, I'm going to try to work maybe a Tim Anderson deal, see if anyone will. It's not that I think like Tim Anderson can't be at least all right. It's just like this contract just kind of sucks. <laughs> all right, I found us our first trade. I'm going to send away Tim Anderson and his contract. I'm also going to send away Gavin Sheets, one of my first base prospects, and Luis Corbello, who... Uh, OSA seems to really like him, but my scout maybe not so much. The ratings still actually look all right, honestly, but uh, yeah, he's a, he's a long way away from the majors. And I'm going to get back Victor Reyes, who uh, probably starts in AAA, but um, he's on a major league contract and could very well be in the major leagues up this year. In fact, he probably will be. And uh, Gregory Soto, kind of an older, he's 23 in AA. 
uh, starting pitcher prospect. He's got some potential. So, um, yeah, that's the deal I'm making. Just probably good to, you know, if if someone's gonna be on a big on a big like long contract, I want I want it to be in my, of my doing. You know what I mean? So, first deal. All right, right now I'm trying to identify if there's any kind of cheap, cool shortstop we could get. So the only filter I'm using is fielding rating at shortstop is at least 60. And then what I like to do is I like to just view the batting um, ratings. Maybe just sort by contact. All right, so here's the second trade I'm gonna make. I'm sending away two sort of younger, not so amazing tier prospects. One of them is Miker Adolfo. Uh, power hitter, but maybe not much else to speak of. OSA likes him a bit more. The other one is this guy that's in the international complex. Uh, OSA does really like him. He's just like so far away from being in the majors, these guys, that like, um, yeah. So interesting 17 year old prospect named Trent DeVoe. Uh, I love his speed and his stealing. That's awesome. There's uh, the discipline is not there, but the contact and the home run power in the avoid case could be. Defense looks like he could be an all right center fielder, so uh, he's definitely an interesting one. And then uh, Nolan Fontana, who's not a player I'm familiar with, he played 12 games in the majors last year, but uh, I actually do really like his ratings. He he doesn't have power, his contact isn't that great, but his, his discipline's there, his avoid case isn't terrible. Speed is all right. Uh, fielding rings are actually really, really solid. So I'm going to give him a shot to sort of replace um, Tim Anderson in the starting lineup. So yeah, I think this is a cool little trade, and I'm going for it. Okay, this guy, Juan C. Perez, I am going to sign. He has about 100 games of experience in the majors. Obviously, the hitting ratings aren't they're certainly below average but they he's not like stand out terrible at anything and his fielding ratings are actually really good so i'm gonna sign him i also think that making matt davidson my dh for now makes sense so he will be our dh just rearranging the lineup a little bit. I want Castillo hitting cleanup against lefties. All right, I had record uh, record problems. <laughs> also had speaking problems. Jesus Christ, uh, recording problems um, with opening day. So I'll be sure to record a game. It won't be opening day, but it may be the opening series, so to speak. So I think that's okay. I lost four to seven. Uh, I started off 4-1. to one. Um, I'm not quite going to cut off the episode yet because there were a few more things I wanted to talk about. Um, I do play with owner goals. Okay, so a couple of things just to add on to the end. Uh, my Gutierrez and Thul signed. That's good. And I wanted to at least go over the owner goals really quickly because I do do those. Uh, don't suck completely this season, upgrade at center field this season, keep building your team up in order to reach the playoffs in the next four seasons. So I'm cool with that. Our, our owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, his fiscal personality is generous. Everything about him seems nice. Uh, I'm sad that he's 82 because he may uh, move on and then we may get saddled with an owner who is a real dick. So hopefully that won't happen. But Jay Reinsdorf is a reasonable man that I can deal with for now. In fact, just to appease him further, I'm going to at least try to find a, a decent center fielder I could trade for, kind of similar to uh, the shortstop that we found, similar method. 
All right, I'm going to make a trade for a guy who I'm really intrigued by in real life. In real life, his name is Zach Granite. He is um, a kind of older prospect. He's 25 years old, and, and he's in the uh, Minnesota Twins system. And the reason I, I really like him is because Fangraphs has this – well, they don't have it anymore. It got bought out by a major league team. I can't remember which one, but they had this um, sort of – formula-based projection system called Cato, and he was just, um, according to that system, like really super underrated. And you can see he's got some like really cool ratings going on as, in terms of his contact, his uh, eye, and his avoid case. He seems like a guy who'd be able to get on base, and the fact that he has speed and can steal, and he can play an all right-ish center field, not an amazing one, but an all right-ish outfielder for sure. So I'm going to give him a shot and he'll kind of be used as a platoon bat in the outfield, and hopefully he, combined with um, uh, Juan C. Perez, can sort of offer us some, some good enough defense and offense in the outfield. So I'm going to make this trade. Uh, the guy I'm saying away, his name is Erickson Arias. He is a relief pitcher slash starting pitching prospect. And, um, yeah, just... Um, I know I'm I know I'm trading away a, a lot of prospects, but these guys aren't like the high tier prospects by any means. So uh, I I'm down for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this trade for Zach Granite. All right, just sort of a final update on our lineups. You can see it right now. Mankata is our second baseman. Avi will bat second and play right. Abreu bats third, plays first. Um, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to switch Gutierrez and Delmonico. So DH, Franklin Gutierrez, we've signed to play DH for us mostly, and we'll be able to outfield. Uh, Castillo will, will bat fifth against the righties. Delmonico, Fontana, and Granite round up a, a sort of a run of lefties there at the end of the lineup. So Delmonico playing third, Fontana playing shortstop. Granite playing left, these two being our new sort of acquisitions that I traded away, hopefully non-prospects for. And then Juan C. Perez, the uh, free agent signing, will be our starting center fielder against lefties. Slightly different, but still pretty similar. Uh, Moncada leads off. Garcia, Abreu, Castillo batting cleanup now. Gutierrez, Delmonico batting sixth. Luri Garcia takes the place of Zach Granite. In left field, Fontana will still bat eighth and play short. Juan C. Perez still at the bottom of the lineup. Uh, I feel like this is not an amazing lineup by any means, but it's certainly an improvement to what we started off with. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and play the second game versus Casey, and that will be the actual end of the episode. So let's do it. Ooh, Alex Gordon, deep. That looks like it's going to be out of here. He opens up the scoring in the bottom of the second. Cuthbert now. Will that be caught? Yes, it will be. Okay, end of the second. All right, Gutierrez has gotten hit by a pitch in his very first game with us, so I feel bad for him. Uh, Matt Davidson will be subbed in as our designated hitter for now. Lucas Duda deep. James Shields, Jesus, 435 feet. He killed it. 3 0 Royals in the bottom of the fourth now. James Shields has actually injured himself at the end of the fourth inning, so I have Manaya in the bullpen to pitch the fifth. Not that this game is going terribly well to begin with. Lopez now on the mound after a good bout of relief from Manaya in the bottom of the seventh. Down to our last out here, unfortunately. Pitching staff did pretty well, but bats didn't quite have it, and that'll be the game. Well, okay. All right, well, I will see you guys in the next episode.